On Halloween morning in 1992, the Fox Kids Network added a new show to their Saturday morning lineup and introduced one of the strongest, most iconic portrayals of a black woman character. That show was the X-Men animated series, and that character was Storm. In the first episode, titled Night of the Sentinels Part 1, which was an adaptation of two different comics, there's a phenomenal scene at the shopping mall where a sentinel captured a young and afraid Jubilee who ran away from her home after her adoptive father registered Jubilee under the Mutant Registration Act. As shoppers ran for the hills, Storm and Rogue stepped up to the 18-foot giant and we were blessed with one of the most badass ways to introduce your presence. Storm! Mistress of the Elements commands you to release that child! Unidentified mutants. Ignore. The show ended in 1997, but Storm fans only had to wait three long years for the next portrayal of Storm in the 2000 live adaptation film directed by Brian Singer. Although we can't deny the acting capabilities of Halle Berry, the consensus among X-Men and Storm fans all seem to sing a similar tune. This version did not live up to the hype. From her watered-down abilities to her docile personality, this version of Storm had so much potential, but delivered so little. So how did they drop this ball? How did a Hollywood studio with a $75 million budget, a team of all-star directors and writers, and an Oscar-winning actress disappoint so many fans? Welcome everyone to episode one of Marginal Error, a new series where we examine the quality of representation for people of color in popular culture. Today, we are talking about Storm. To understand why so many Storm fans feel disappointed with the casting and portrayal of Storm in live action X-Men films, we need to address three main reasons. One, her character was underdeveloped, Two, her powers and abilities were heavily watered down. And three, her physical appearance wasn't accurate to Storm's specific origins. To help me comprehend these three, I invited Monique Bosco, a long-term member of the Black community who's a children's author, an activist for mental health, and the biggest X-Men Storm fan I know who grew up reading the comics and watching the animated series. I don't know if I can think of anything that was more antithetical to how she should have been portrayed than how she was portrayed by Halle Berry. It is canonic that like she it's absolute canon that she is one of the strongest mutants alive. But before we begin let's recap a few key facts about Storm's origins so we can get a sense of where to base our opinion. The world was first introduced to Storm in 1975 in giant size X-Men issue number one. Created by Len Wein and David Cockrum, Storm was Marvel Comics' first black woman character, and she's recognized as one of the leading women in Marvel, similar to the role that Wonder Woman plays in DC Comics. Designed to be a mashup of the Black Cat and Typhoon, Storm is one of the most powerful mutants on Earth, with the power to control and manipulate the weather and the atmosphere. In other words, Storm has a lot of tricks up her sleeve. Most of us know Storm for her lightning and wind capabilities, but Storm's full range of abilities include the power to engulf a continent with tornadoes, to send floods halfway across the country, she can split atoms, suck the oxygen out of people's lungs, shut down your central nervous systems, and she can breathe underwater and in outer space. Born Aurora Monroe, Storm is the daughter of a Kenyan tribal princess and an African-American photojournalist who was raised in Harlem, New York and Cairo, Egypt. 
After the trauma of losing her parents during an Arab-Israeli conflict and being buried alive, Storm was left with severe claustrophobia that would carry into her adulthood. You three, stop the walls. I shall slow the ceiling. When she was a child in Cairo, Storm crossed paths with Professor X and left an impression on Charles Xavier for her skills in pickpocketing and her mutant abilities. It wasn't until she was an adult when Professor X approached Storm and invited her to join the X-Men. As one of the founding members of the X-Men, Storm played a crucial role in the comics and the animated series as a leader. In the 1980s, after artist Paul Smith redesigned Storm with short hair and a punk rock aesthetic, Storm lost her abilities, but still managed to defeat Cyclops in a battle to see who would become the next leader of the X-Men. Once you learn about all of these crucial details regarding Storm's background, it becomes crystal clear that the version of Storm that we got from the X-Men movies was a far cry from the version that long-term Storm fans expected. The first reason, Storm's underdeveloped character. Across all of the live action movies with Halle Berry, which include X-Men, X2, X-Men The Last Stand, and X-Men Days of Future Past, Aurora Monroe only appeared in a handful of scenes without any solid character development. We don't learn about Storm's origins as a child of Harlem and Cairo or her struggle with claustrophobia, nor do we get the sense that she's leading the X-Men in the same way she carries that mantle in the comics or in the animated series. I cannot overstate her leadership role in the X-Men, that she was someone that Professor X trusted, gave her a lot of responsibilities. Um, she feels emotion, she's very empathic, but she's not led by them. In the movie, however, she's just kind of hanging around. Like she just, she's a plot device. She's a way for the story to move along when they need something to happen. And that's really all that she does. And that's so diametrically opposed to the way that she was portrayed in the comics that I don't, she's not, not even recognized in the movie. When you throw out all of Storm's corny lines and the few times she appears on screen, you're left wondering, where is Storm in this universe? How did the producers reduce one of the leaders of the X-Men and turn her into a supporting character? She had her own comic series and there were storylines in the comics and in the cartoon where she was the point. She was the focal point. It was her story and she was driving it along as opposed to just being in this movie where it's like, oh no, we need someone to make it rain. Like, you know, like she was just, she was a plot device and not really gaining a story of her own, not really even having a storyline of her own. And honestly, she didn't have that many lines. Like she's just there. This results in hollow one-liners and corny scenes that tell us very little about Storm's motivations or capabilities. What we end up with is a character whose potential gets bottled up in order to leave space for everybody else. Storm's watered-down abilities. If you judge Storm based on her appearances in the live-action films, it's easy to walk away with the misconception that Storm only has three main abilities, controlling the wind, lightning, and snow. And although those are some of her core abilities, they don't represent the range or the limitations of her Omega level mutant powers. She is a literal priestess and in, in canon is considered one of the most powerful of all mutants. Thing that she's obviously most noted for is the fact that she can control the atmosphere and the weather around her. 
And that is the, the ability to kind of manipulate those elements is one of the things that makes her as powerful as she is. One of the most notable criticisms of Storm's abilities is the fact that she requires immense time and energy to throw a few bolts of lightning, a reality that doesn't seem in line with Storm's capabilities in comics or the animated series. If Storm can create tropical weather storms across the globe and siphon the air out of your lungs, why is she struggling so much to zap a few people with lightning? How did a fearless mutant leader and a goddess, a literal goddess, get tricked into this shit? Though I understand the need to balance the X-Men so no one in particular is outrageously stronger than the other, I do not agree with the decision to heavily nerf Storm's abilities to this level. Yes, Storm has a few moments like in X2 where she summons a wave of tornadoes to take out a bunch of fighter jets, and there's also the end of X-Men that I won't want to spoil, but other than that, what other notable moments do we have? Is this really the extent of Storm's capabilities? Storm's appearance. One of the most talked about topics surrounding the treatment of Storm is the way Storm's appearance has been changed to favor lighter skinned actresses like Halle Berry and Alexander Shipp. What Hollywood tends to think of their target demographic is white men and straight and cisgender white men. And so they are, and that's just evident from, like if you're looking at, um, a comedy, the standard is considered a white comedy. Friends is a comedy. Living Single, which predated Friends, is considered a black comedy. Everything that goes against what is considered the default has to be defined. And so I think, especially when they think that the only people who read comics are these straight and cisgendered white men, that's who they're trying to please. And so Hollywood has a history of doing what they want to make things how they think will be perceived as more palatable to their target demographic. And that means usually lightening the skin of the black characters because they want their target audience to receive them well. Although there's nothing wrong with how either of them look, the decision to cast them as Aurora Monroe seems to have come less from their faithful embodiment of the Omega level goddess and more to do with, at the time, Halle Berry's high status as an actress in the early 2000s. Fresh off her Emmy Award winning performance as Dorothy Dandridge, Halle Berry was a household name, so it's easy to see why they chose her for this role based off of name recognition. But if you ask X-Men fans and Storm fans, and in particular, black women who've been a fan of Storm since the beginning, there's an overwhelming sense of disappointment in this casting decision. The original role of Storm was supposed to be filled by Angela Bassett, who many fans consider to be the perfect Storm. And in fact, Angela was offered the position, she declined, and we wound up with Halle Berry instead. But refusing to cast a dark-skinned actress when they first filled that role of Storm and continuing this decision with the casting of Alexandra, many Storm fans were left wondering when they might see an accurate depiction of their favorite mutant goddess. There are, uh, all they would really have to do is pick one of the Dormelage from Black Panther because that's who, that's where they should start. For, from that pool of actresses. And beyond that, beyond just her skin tone, really, really the character development. Because she is a literal goddess. Given her role in nerd history as a beacon of representation for dark skinned black nerds, the lightning of Storm in the X-Men movies represents more than just an inaccurate casting decision. It represents a failure to acknowledge that dark-skinned black characters exist, their stories matter, and most importantly, the fans who have always stood by Storm and these characters since day one, they matter too. They need to do her justice. Really, that's what it comes down to. They need to do her justice. There are enough storylines in the canon in the comic books where they could pick one and any of the time that she worked any of the times she's worked with the avengers 
um, the divorce. You know, even if they wanted to look at the storyline surrounding uh, her divorce from T'Challa, from the Black Panther, um, there are so many stories that they could dive into that have a rich and complex history that show her ability to be a leader, that show how much she was trusted, that shows what she's capable of doing aside from just standing next to some guy and waiting for him to direct her. That's not how it works. Representation doesn't last forever. When we talk about earning our seat at the table, we often forget that that meeting doesn't last that long. If you're a nerd of color, you know that having a character on TV who looks like you right now might mean you won't get another one for another five or 10 years. And in the case of Aurora Monroe, black nerds who grew up with the empowered, dark-skinned goddess version of Storm felt cheated when Hollywood cast Halle Berry and turned her into a docile background character. That said, none of these reasons can be blamed solely on Halle Berry or anyone in particular. Storm was created by two white men. The directors of all the films were white people and the writer's room consisted mainly of white writers. This strikes to the core of why full representation matters. It's not just about who is in the casting room and who is playing these characters on the silver screen. It also includes the writer's room. It also includes the editing room. It also includes the executive and the creative level. Storm deserves so much better. For starters, Storm deserves her own film with a story that explores her incredible background. I'd love to see a movie that depicts Storm's life in Cairo or Harlem and her progression towards Omega level status. I want a feature length film or an entire TV series that can showcase all of Storm's mutant capabilities. And lastly, we all deserve to see a Storm centered project starring a dark skinned black woman actress so we can give true storm fans the version of the weather goddess they've always dreamed of all right folks that's all for today on this episode of marginal error if you agree or disagree with this leave a comment down below let us know if you've seen the x-men movies and share your thoughts on halle berry storm 